Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar involving Esri, Avinian, and Pasadena Water, Pasadena Water and Power. My name is Joe Johnson, and I'm the marketing coordinator for the electric and gas utility team here in Redlands, California. Our webinar today is titled Esri's Utility Network, Understanding the Impact and Planning the Journey. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. I'll then turn it over to our main speakers. On this slide, you'll see the different options you have during the webinar. You can change how you connect to the audio or adjust your view. Also, keep in mind you can ask questions during the webinar using the question dialog box and hitting the send button. Please know there will be time for questions and answers towards the end of the webinar. At this time, I'd like to introduce our four speakers. First, Bill Meehan, Director of Utility Solutions at Esri. Mike Chasen, GIS Coordinator for Power at Pasadena Water and Power. Joel Campbell, Vice President, Commercial Systems at Avinian. And Anil Jayavarapu, Director of Software Solutions at Avinian. This time, I'd now like to turn it over to Bill Meehan. Thanks, Joe. Well, I want to also thank Mike and Joel and Anil for, for joining us on this webinar. Um, I, I've been in this business for a long time, and, um, and I think over the next five years, maybe even less, there'll be more changes in the utility industry uh, in the next five or three years than there has been probably in the last uh, maybe century. And I like to use this uh, this graphic, which has the two arrows of rising and falling, to kind of outline, you know, my view of what the utility industry is going through right now. So, uh, look at the rising arrow. So certainly there are rising costs. Everything is always becoming more expensive. There are rising expectations from customers, especially now that customers do things so quickly over the internet and and using some of the social media platforms and so forth. Certainly a rising, if not spectacularly rising number of sensors you know there's just sensors everywhere uh, the, this concept of internet of things is is really becoming um, very very uh, popular in the sense that there's just so many sensors around and uh, the the rising age of the workers at utilities I, I don't really remember now how old the average worker is but it's certainly over 50 and of course the rising impacts of climate change we've seen this dramatically illustrated over the last couple of months here in the United States and elsewhere around the world certainly there's always this continuing rising of regulatory demands and regulatory changes so at the same time that all these kind of impacts are are happening this Kind of this, look at this other arrow, the lowering of, uh, of things. So the lowering of budgets, I mean, that's a reality today. The lowering of revenues, for sure. Uh, the lowering of the, uh, of, in the electric system, the, the lowering of demand, uh, primarily due to the increase, significant increase in, in uh, solar and, and renewable energy and distributed energy resources. That has a significant in impact on the way we operate our power systems. And, and the lowering tolerance of bad service, you know, it, it might take uh, several weeks to get an electric service or sometimes it's several months. And the tolerance for that for customers is really, really low. Uh, there's also a lowering number of skilled workers. As people get older, uh, those workers will retire, and uh, to, to backfill those folks, it's, it's been very, very difficult and a challenge. Having worked in a power company, you know, getting a, a line worker trained and up and running can be a really a multi-year uh, impact, and sometimes it's very difficult. And certainly, the, the lo there's a lowering ability to respond to these climate events. Uh, look at what happened in Puerto Rico. I mean, it's, we're still struggling with so, those sort of things. And... and um, so sort of to, to think about, all, when I think about all of those uh, rising things and lowering things, uh, there's a common theme there, and it's about location. You know, almost everything you, that a utility does, uh, gas, electric, water, even, it's really about location. We've come up with a, a tagline called the science of where, which, and it really is about where and work. Where is work and where is it going on? And that's really why uh, GIS has become uh, much more central uh, to the, the strategic thinking of utilities. Uh, maybe over the years, uh, uh, you know, 
GIS has been thought of as a kind of a, a, a an application to be able to replicate or speed up the processing of of uh, facility maps and and things like that. And I think a lot of times people have have thought of GIS as a way to replicate their old operating maps. And uh, I, I'm, the change really is dramatic. And I like to think of this change uh, of this kind of concept of digital transformation as utilities are kind of transforming how they think about GIS. Uh, from a kind of a digital transition from paper to just GIS from a more strategic and a much more valuable um, application. In fact, it's not it's it's really a change not just in in the use of GIS but in the in the way that uh, we have been building GIS. We've kind of migrated away from this concept of GIS as an application or a program or even a system to a platform. And a platform is becoming kind of the buzzword around the IT industry that it's much more than than kind of a system in that a platform like the platforms we've been using, social media platforms like Facebook or or purchasing platforms like Amazon or music platforms like like Spotify. And, and they really transformed the business. And then GIS can be that transformational, given the fact that the utilities are so uh, engaged in things around location, this location platform, the science of where has become really, really critical. So Esri has been building this platform for the last, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five years that we've really, really implemented this concept of a platform. We've come out with this, with the number of uh, uh, products over the years and many people have using it, the portal RTS online, which allows people to, to use GIS on any device, anywhere at any time. And so what uh, what we've been doing is we've been continuously building and improving upon that platform. And uh, over the last several years, we've been looking very hard at how this platform works with the kind of system of record, you know, the, the place that people store their, their, their pipes and their wires and their transformers and all of that. And while we've got a very, very solid platform today, we were thinking about how can we really expand that platform. And that's why we've come out with, we are going to be releasing over the next uh, several months, something we call the ArcGIS a utility network management extension, which is sometimes people refer to it as the utility network. And what's the difference there between what we've had in the past? What we've had in the past worked very, very well and still continues to work very, very well. But one of the things that we, we're kind of building upon this concept of a platform, and so the this utility network now is a full participant in the platform. That means that whatever you do on the desktop, you'll be able to do on a mobile device, on a iPhone or Android phone or uh, Windows phone, you'll be able to do it across the platform. And that's really the, the, probably one of the biggest advantages of this utility network. So that means that that the system is much more complete. The other thing that that is part of this, and there's many, 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 many new features of this uh, uh, utility network. One of them would be high fidelity uh, modeling of, of networks. So for example, uh, transformers and switches can have terminals and that sort of thing. You'll be able to build structural networks like poles and underground features. Uh, you'll be able to do implicit versus and explicit connectivity if things don't connect. Fully represents 3D. So there's, there are many, many features and you can, you can check online. We have a white paper that you can look at. Just go online and you can see it. So this idea of the utilities changing over the, the next couple of years uh, sub substantially requires an enabling technology. And so uh, the platform technology for location, as we call it, part of the participate in the science of where, is really the future. This is going to help utilities meet the uh, demands of the future, those rising things and those falling things. And, and it really is because I think the business is going to change and so the opportunities for utilities are going to be growing. And so that's a little bit of introduction, but I also want to say, okay, so let's talk about the utility network in, in a little bit more detail. And with that, I want to turn it over to my friend Joel Campbell with Avinian. I've known Joel for years, uh, and uh, he's a pretty savvy guy. He's been around in this business for a long time. So uh, Avinian is going to talk about it, and, and also Pasadena, they're going to talk about some of the things they've done with the utility network. It's going to be very exciting, and, and I'm really, really pleased, and I want to thank Avinian and Pasadena for for their participation in this webinar. So I'm gonna turn it over to Joel. Joel, take it away. Bill, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that uh, introduction and uh, your view on where things are headed. And uh, 
I'd like to welcome everyone to this webinar uh, on behalf of Avinion and Pasadena. Uh, we're happy to be here today and share with you um, some of what we call uh, planning the journey uh, to the utility network. Uh, this is how we look at things from an existing customer's perspective, and they may be um, uh, very savvy in how they're implementing GIS for their utility infrastructure today using uh, ArcGIS, ArcFM, other tools. And as they start to think about uh, the utility network and what that means to their organization, uh, there's obviously some planning that needs to take place and some understanding. And we view this as a journey that um, they're going to be on for the next um, you know, 12 to 18 to 24 months or more, depending on who they are and what they are. Um, so today, what we're going to share with you a little bit about uh, Pasadena Water and Power, uh, who's been a longtime customer of Avinion uh, and is a ArcGIS and ArcFM user, uh, and what we sort of started with them on this journey of discovery. Uh, we're going to show you a demonstration of uh, the proof of concept we've been working on along with Pasadena, and then give you some of our views on uh, where things stand uh, in terms of the value of the utility network and what that might mean for an organization and how to take full advantage of that. So before I go much further, um, I want to talk about sort of this journey and, and, and Pasadena and understanding the impact and some of the questions that sort of are being asked. So, um, you know, thinking at the broader picture, what business needs do I need to serve in the future? We've traditionally looked at serving the asset management space, uh, perhaps um, field space, preventative maintenance space. Uh, emergency response pace, but what do we think we might need in the future? Uh, many folks in the industry are well acquainted with uh, uh, automated distribution management systems and outage management systems and their impact on the GIS and what other business needs in the future will the GIS need to serve? So those are some of the questions we find ourselves asking. Uh, which workflows and processes can we be improved if we modernize our GIS, if we take advantage of the newest technologies, can we improve and make more efficient, uh, more deliberate, more accurate some of our workflows and processes? Uh, how will it be consumed? Um, as Bill mentioned, as we move to this platform notion, uh, the differentiation between how we look at our systems in the field, uh, on mobile devices, in the office, over the web, uh, we need to understand all the folks that are going to consume these systems and um, meet them where they work, so to speak, uh, whatever devices or platforms they're working on. We also want to talk about how often data needs to be updated in the GIS, the sort of transactional nature of data. We know there are changes on the network every day. Uh, do we want to see all those changes in real time? Do we want to look at daily published data sets? How do we want to deal with our data and the updates? And how much detail uh, in the connectivity and the assets, because we can go uh, to a high uh, fidelity, detailed level, does that mean we need to? Does that mean all of our systems and users and various use cases need that level of detail? And how do we manage through that? Then as we look at all of those, we have to sort of really assess what changes does that mean to our underlying GIS data model? Uh, the new capabilities of the utility network, uh, does that mean we have significant changes on our data models? Uh, and how do we reconcile those? Uh, does that also mean we need additional data? Uh, do we have sufficient data to fill the data model? And then what views and output products are we going to provide? So uh, are there new connections to systems? Are there new ways of viewing this data? Are there new reporting mechanisms or dashboards or things of that nature? So there's a lot of questions that need to be asked and, and answered, and some cases uh, in an iterative fashion as we start this journey uh, towards uh, fully leveraging the utility network. And Avinion has sort of built a head start program to uh, work with customers to try and help ask and answer some of those questions in a very methodical way. At this point, I'd like to introduce um, our customer, Mike Chasen, and let him give you a little bit of an overview about Pasadena and um, what their system is all about. Good morning, everybody. Um, before I start here, we have a, I have some fun facts about the city of Pasadena, our power system, and our GIS. Uh, city of Pasadena, we're 23 square miles. Uh, we have 142,000 residents. Uh, 
We are home to the 129th Tournament of Rose Parade and the 104th Rose Bowl football game. Yeah. There's our commercial for now. Pasadena has also been named Tree City USA. We have 85% of our city is covered by trees. And uh, you guys know what that I mean, that's a lot of tree squirrels and our power system. We currently have 11,000 poles. We have 7,700 underground structures with 771 miles of conduit. With so many miles of conduits, hey, we are a big user of Conduit Manager. Uh, on a side note for those conduits, uh, a lot of those conduits were built during the 1930s depression when PWP hired the citizens of Pasadena to work on their building programs to help them out for two week periods. This work provided money for food, housing, and of course, their utility bill. Uh, Pasadena has 160 circuits. We have 34 kV, we have 17 and 4 kV. We have eight 17 to four step down circuits. For this project, we provided a Vinian one of those step down 17 to four circuits. These two circuits have over 95% of all our GIS features in them. We have 11 substations and two receiving stations. 60% of our customers uh, serve from the underground and 40% for the, the overhead. Gives you a little overview of what we have here. Uh, in our GIS, we uh, currently uh, do our civil and electric designs in AutoCAD. We update our engineering analysis and OMS models weekly. And uh, we use a field portal for inspections, redlining, 811 dig alerts, and vegetation management. Um, we wanted the, this evaluation on the utility network to, you know, to, to be done on one of our step-down circuits because we have issues with it right now uh, with the feeder ID. So with that being said, uh, let me turn it over to a nail for a demo. So before we get to a nail, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. I just want to set the stage for you. Um, um, Pasadena has been a customer of Vineons for quite some time. Uh, we do a, a lot of data work for them uh, in their ArcGIS system, as well as uh, in ArcFM and in um, Conduit Manager. As Mike says, where they're one of the uh, most prolific users of Conduit Manager. Uh, given the amount of underground facilities that they do have serving a large part of their customer base. So as part of this uh, proof of concept that we wanted to work through with them, uh, we wanted to take a look at some very specific things, containers, associations, and terminals to take some advantage of the new capabilities of the utility network. Uh, we also wanted to look at sub-network tracing and diagrams, again, uh, introductions of things that uh, we think will be meaningful for uh, PWP. And then 2D versus 3D in the overhead and the underground world. So these were some of the areas of exploration that we took on uh, in, in terms of doing this proof of concept. Uh, what I'd like to do now is, in fact, turn it over to Anil. Uh, I'm going to switch the screen here if you'll pause with me for a moment. And Anil is going to perform a demonstration uh, of some of the work that we've done for uh, Pasadena and the proof of concept. And then we'll come back and talk about uh, some more pieces of the journey. So, Neil? Uh, thanks, Joel. Uh, what you're seeing right now is uh, ArcGIS Pro, uh, which is the pre-release of the utility network that came out end of uh, September. Uh, we're going to start off this uh, demonstration with uh, taking a look at uh, the 3D maps. You know, like Mike, ma Mike mentioned, uh, you know, especially when you have a lot of underground infrastructure, you know, it's uh, very hard to kind of uh, plan and design activities so it's a kind of a you know interesting direction with which uh, GIS platform is going these days, wherein you would be able to actually see the information in a more a uh, you know perspective of as if you're seeing and seeing things in the field. Uh, to do this, you know we are going to look at ArcGIS Pro, and what we have here is on the left a 2D map, as well as a 3D map on the right side, and we are actually zoomed into a street intersection where we are actually seeing a manhole. And on the left, as you can see, if I zoom a little bit closer and uh, start turning my layers on, uh, I have my uh, conduits uh, coming in from several directions. And uh, if I zoom even further closer, 
I turn on my uh, devices, and here, here this happens to be a, a manhole with uh, uh, you know sort of, sort of functioning as a vault with some uh, transformer bank and some uh, switch gear equipment and things like that. At this point, if I go ahead and show you some of the lines coming in, uh, you know, all the blue lines being the primary lines coming into the transformer and red being, uh, uh, you know, the secondary lines going out. So it's a pretty uh, busy uh, underground system. You know, right now, the way it is modeled is for 2D cartography uh, to be able to see things in a clear manner, uh, whether you're printing a, you know, high scale map or a low scale map and things like that. And one of the areas for us to examine is uh, how best to uh, you know, continue with this path as we kind of look at utility network. Should we still offset the lines now that we know some of the ducts are above and below and things like that? So it's a you know, classic example for uh, many downtowns across the country in terms of how best to utilize utility network and this three-dimensional capability uh, for their uh, uh, infrastructure modeling and asset modeling. Now let me go ahead to my, to my 3D view for the same uh, manhole. And if you notice here right now, I'm looking at from a uh, height of around an uh, you know, elevation of 392 feet, which means that I'm looking from top, uh, you know, down as if you're looking from a you know, top of a building. If I, you know, kind of go, you know, to an elevation level of, uh, you know, three feet, all of a sudden I should see the, my uh, underground conduits coming in. So it kind of gives you a quick flavor of, you know, what it's really in the field. You know, I really can see conduits with my eye depending on which elevation I am. And that's kind of the experience that uh, you know, RGIS Pro provides for us as we start working with uh, three-dimensional data. Now, to kind of give you a better sense of that little bit, now we let me, the same exact area, same exact manhole, I'm now turning into a uh, you know, 3D view, and I could actually you know, zoom in to the area, navigate, and kind of see what's going on, where my primary is coming in, uh, or secondary is going out, and things like that. To do that, I can go to my 3D layers and start looking at, okay, let me not show the conduits for this moment, the, the main conduits coming in and the secondary conduits going out and exactly where along the walls they are coming in and going out. Uh, similarly, now I could go ahead and turn my conduits off and actually see my uh, electrical lines coming in once I turn those layers on. And I could also you know, turn my vault off for a second to actually see that where exactly those uh, uh, you know, cables are coming in at the walls of where they are stopping and, uh, you know, how the primary and secondary is going in. So it's a, you know, very interesting experience as, uh, uh, you know, we are able to see these things. Similarly, you know, we are able to take a look at, uh, you know, overhead infrastructure where you're able to see, uh, you know, transformers and mid-span taps and things like that in a fairly decent sense. And uh, you can actually also go into a, you know, much broader view to be able to get a perspective of you know where the trees are and where the lines are and uh, how to plan uh, you know activities from you know vegetation management and things like that what have you if you will so it's a uh, a very new experience and a paradigm into which we can start visualizing information in a more se clear sense and this also helps with uh, you know as we get into the wearable devices and technologies like that uh, you know this uh, uh, data framework three-dimensional data framework is going to help organizations get into a, a newer generation or the you know, digital transformation path of uh, leveraging technology for safety and many other issues that Bill has mentioned uh, uh, in the, in the, at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, moving on to the uh, second topic, uh, one of the interesting concepts that uh, uh, Utility Network provides is uh, uh, containers, meaning when we have a, a dense uh, you know, close information, how do we be able to carefully, uh, you know, uh, control the display of uh, uh, the content in the maps? Uh, for example, here we are coming to the same uh, underground location and, uh, you know, we have uh, the, you know, uh, uh, transformer bank, uh, switch gear, and uh, a few other uh, manholes and uh, ca cables coming in and primary going out. And in this area, you know, uh, as you can see, it's a busy intersection. The black lines being the conduits and the duct banks and things like that. The manhole being the center here. And we know from the high level map that there's a switch gear and a transformer bank. The green circle right next to it indicates that there is actually a vault. So utility network provides this ability wherein, uh, you know, I could actually go into my toolbar 
and use this tool called enter containment. And when I use my enter containment feature on my vault, uh, now what I'm uh, trying to get into is it opens up the vault and actually, uh, you know, instead of displaying the switch gear, it's actually displaying me the actual switches. And similarly, if instead of actually displaying the actual uh, transformer bank, now it's showing me the transformer units. So I'll just give you a sense of example of, uh, you know, some of the areas that we are helping Mike examine uh, through this proof of concept, wherein he's able to make a determination of, you know, should we still leave the lines offset as like they were before, or should we tighten them up much closer up to the walls? So these are many other areas that uh, needs to be examined to be able to clearly plan the path forward and establish the your uh, accurate digital models moving forward into the you know future. Uh, with this, now let me uh, show you uh, another uh, very interesting capability within uh, a utility network. One of the features that is available within the utility network is uh, uh, called subnetwork management, which is the ability to easily uh, you know search and filter on feeders and view them. And as you can see on the right side, we have this. Uh, uh, screen showing up where I could see different, uh, you know, circuits listed in there. If I refresh my, uh, you know, toolbar, depending on extent I am in, it starts listing the feeders or the circuits that belong to this area. I could right click on any of those circuits and uh, either select them or I could run a quick uh, network trace. You know, previously in GIS, we are used to seeing lines and points and searching by equipment. Now, all of a sudden with your network, you really have the ability uh, to actually manage and work with assets and infrastructure networks and sub networks and things like that. So for an engineer or a planner or uh, you know, anyone from the uh, business line of uh, uh, you know, utility company, especially on the gas, electric, water, telecom side, you're no longer talking about points and lines and polygons. You're now really talking about assets and networks and uh, you know, uh, the actual system as, as you kind of picture in your brain and as you actually see in the field. One of the interesting uh, capabilities of this uh, uh, utility network is uh, uh, if I have a large area several miles apart or several kilometers apart, you know, all that connectivity, it's easy to kind of uh, see, you know, in a big map, but you really can't understand what is connected to what, uh, you know, if you zoom in too close, it's too tight. If it's, you know, too far away, it's, uh, you know, too much information. So to kind of uh, address this problem, uh, what Yisra has done is a, a phenomenal capability called the diagrams. So for example, here I have this area I want to know the, how everything is really logically connected here. Uh, you know, one of the ways to go about it is to select that, uh, you know, area of interest, whether it be a small selection or a large selection, and I could go ahead and fire off and create a new diagram. And diagram essentially uh, condenses all this information into a simple sheet of paper where I could actually clearly understand this connectivity. And here is an example of, uh, you know, one such uh, uh, diagram. Here I know exactly where the circuit starts where my switches are, you know, where the transformers are, what transformer size it is, and, uh, you know, which customers is it feeding, all in a small sheet of paper. If you actually really try to look at this in the map, it's, uh, you know, several uh, uh, miles uh, uh, square area. So the diagrams provide a, a very interesting direction in which uh, customers can start consuming all the value that uh, GIS provides with a very uh, phenomenal, interesting visualization. One of the uh, interesting capabilities with the ArcGIS Pro, as uh, some of you know, is the ability to actually simultaneously see uh, maps and diagrams at the same time, right? So if I'm actually uh, having them at the both on the, uh, next to each other as designers of uh, uh, utility network, utility systems, you know, we, we are trying to make decisions and trying to design systems and things like that. So wouldn't it be nice to actually navigate between these views? And uh, that's exactly what is available in the utility network. So within the utility network, we have this ability to go into diagrams, be able to select and say, you know what, uh, this particular set of customers, they're coming off this transformer. I exactly want to know where this uh, switch is. To do that, I could select that particular switch in the diagram. And uh, once the selection is made, I could, uh, go into my uh, diagrams and use the menu and say apply that to the map. 
So it is taking the selection from the diagram and taking me to the appropriate location into the map where I can actually see uh, you know, the corresponding switch in the map. So now as a planner or as a designer, I can make uh, you know, good choices in terms of you know, how do I want to go about uh, you know, making the design decisions and how do I want to go about uh, you know, planning the extra load I want to add or you know, move the load I want to make in a very concise and clear manner. So the capability to do this uh, you know, is uh, phenomenal and the opportunity that lies ahead is uh, uh, you know, extensive. So this is a, a fantastic opportunity for customers to start you know, thinking about, uh, you know, given the data of what, where they are right now, how do I plan my uh, data going into the utility network? Is it going to be just as it is? Or am I going to enrich with 3D? Am I going to enrich with the container content relationships? So I have more control on what I'm display displaying. Am I going to organize my data into maps as well as diagrams so it is easy and more consumable for users, not only on the desktop environments, but perhaps on the browsers as well as mobile devices. With that, let me also go back and share a few thoughts on, uh, uh, you know, at, at what we have been learning at Evanian, uh, you know, with uh, doing this proof of concept. Uh, the journey of actually moving the data from the current state to the utility network uh, is, uh, you know, a multi-step process. Uh, once Mike uh, provided us with the data for the step-down circuits, uh, we conducted a, a gap analysis to compare uh, what Mike had in his RKFM model with uh, the in the electrical industry package that ESRI provides, which includes the asset types, asset groups, the relationships between them, and the business rules and all that. Once we completed that uh, gap analysis, uh, we went into the process of actually using the utility network toolbox within uh, our GIS Pro and our uh, data modeler went ahead and identified and uh, defined the necessary uh, asset types and groups to make sure we have a receiving end that can receive all this data. Once that is done, uh, our team went through a pre-processing uh, uh, activity. Uh, this essentially involves, uh, you know, we didn't have containers before, we didn't have terminals before. These are all new data elements that play a vital role in the utility network functionality, but perhaps did not exist before. Similarly, the three-dimensional uh, data, the depth of the conduit, the width of the conduit, all the detailed configurations, while some of them were available in the conduit manager and RKFM model, many of those details were still uh, you know, remaining in the drawings, engineering drawings that belong to, you know, several years ago. So in, in looking at those drawings and in looking at those all data sources, our guys were able to pull together a rich data set uh, and populate and prepare what is called an asset package. Again, asset package is a new, uh, you know, file geodatabase format that ESRI is providing through the utility network, wherein you can uh, aggregate and consolidate all the data that you think is ready to go into utility network. And for doing this, we have used a number of tools, uh, including FME and uh, you know, our map and our catalog and a number of uh, activities involved in the process and that led, that led into creation of an asset package that is ready to go into the utility network. With that, we went and used the ESRI's uh, tool for loading the asset package. And once the data is loaded into the, uh, you know, database, the new database, a spatial temporal database, uh, we went ahead and published this map. And now uh, we are beginning to uh, analyze the benefits of it. And we are uh, engaging with Mike more and more on a weekly basis to be able to help him understand these capabilities and be able to plan his uh, you know, migration, uh, ultimate migration, whether it be a few months from now or even maybe a few uh, you know, uh, quarters from now, whenever that be. He's now more knowledgeable about the kinds of decisions that he has to talk to his users and the benefits and the uh, pros and cons to be able to make some good decisions as they plan this uh, journey ahead. Some of the areas that we are uh, uh, working with Mike and we look forward to work with him in the, uh, in the near future is, you know, what are the data gaps that he can currently fill in his current GIS in order to make sure that it is more prepared and more ready as they, you know, go into the uh, you know, utility network. And this is one of the key areas of Mike's interest. 
you know, although he may not be going out to utility network for several quarters, he does want to make good plans on, you know, what he can do right now with his current GIS. So the data is, uh, you know, well prepared, uh, you know, for to go whenever that is uh, happening. The second most important is uh, the current data editing practices. He has a standard set of workflow workflows in terms of how service orders are posted, how mainline jobs are posted. You know, is there any changes to the current data editing practices that has to be done to ensure that we are collecting and maintaining and putting in data at a, a higher degree of rigor so it provides greater value when we move eventually move into the utility network. Uh, similarly, data argumentation, uh, you know, what, el what else can we put in the GIS now that we did never put before? You know, maybe you know, should we put in heights, depths, things like that? You know, also start beginning to understand, and uh, not from an IT sense, but probably from a data sense, what are those data fields that, you know, from GIS that are by consumed by other systems, whether it be the OMS system or the planning system, other systems, you know, how are those data fields are going to change, you know, to kind of get a start understanding that little bit. And also another interesting concept to understand is uh, if you look at the, you know, urban planning part of the city, you know, not only here in the US, but across the globe, there is a well laid out standard and definition of what a level of detail means. Uh, for example, the level of detail zero means just the 2D footprint of the building compared to level, level of detail three, LOD three, where you're actually modeling the entire surfaces of the building. Uh, fortunately, this is a well defined for the urban planning industry, but I think it's probably a good time for uh, utility industry as we await for the you know, final release to come out to start thinking around, putting our heads around, what does a LOD means for our infrastructure, for a gas, electric water? You now, what would I do if I, allowed, if I want to have a LOD two level system for my gas? Do I do this for my entire network or do I do 2D for most of the part or specifically when I get into the dense areas or underground, maybe I go into LOD three. This is all a, a good healthy conversations that GIS departments can have right this moment, uh, you know, using the software and the pre-release and the capabilities that ESRI has already shared with us and all that we are sharing, sharing through this session. A couple of other in things that are of interest to Mike as well is uh, uh, all the functionality that is currently Mike is used to do, which is feeder manager, conduit manager, all the RKFM configurations, all the GIS configurations in terms of editing, uh, symbology, all those things, you know, how are they going to change? How are they going to look as we go into utility network? Even though we may not be able to understand completely, at least begin the journey of trying to understand that. And we are going to continue this journey with uh, Mike and we are very thankful for uh, Mike for giving us this opportunity. And we are going to continue to document this as we have been doing along the process. And eventually as we go towards the uh, Christmas season, holiday season, uh, we are going to provide a final proof of concept report to Mike, which will help him uh, as a you know, seed document as he looks at uh, the following years in terms of the next steps that he would like to take. Uh, one last thing uh, I would uh, like to share before I uh, turn it back to Joel here is uh, you know, how excited we here at Evanyan are in looking at this utility network. I mean, at, at, as uh, uh, Joel mentioned, uh, Evanyan has been uh, you know, assisting utility companies across the globe for over 25 years. And we see GIS technology incrementally changing over time. And uh, you know, right now, uh, we are ex very excited about this uh, utility network because it's a, a major refresh or a major change in capability that we see uh, that would benefit all of our customers uh, quite well. Uh, very quickly, uh, you know, some of the capabilities that uh, uh, you know, are being available through the platform that uh, Bill mentioned at the uh, uh, ArcGIS level, perhaps for utility customers as well as for all other GIS, ArcGIS customers, is the ability to use services architecture. Even when you view, edit, analyze maps from any device, the ability that service architecture gives us to deploy highly scalable systems uh, with uh, you know, manageable software for thousands of um, manageable hardware for thousands of users. Uh, right now with the non service architecture you would re require in you know, a tremendous amount of hardware if you to support large number of users but with this we see the possibility of uh, tremendous hardware save savings even if you have to deploy a uh, gi solution for many thousand users uh, similarly the you know the same uh, from shift from 32 bit to 64 bit operating system 
the whole uh, change in the database storage from a simple spatial database to a spatial temporal storage wherein the possibility for an end GIS user to simply come into the GIS and say, hey, how did my GIS connectivity look? You know, meaning my circuit, how did my circuit look? How did my pressure zone look? How did my isolation zone look a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Phenomenal new capability. The ability to go into three dimension, you know, as if you are going into the field to see really, you know, above and below field and things like that. Some of the new topological capabilities, the ability to tell that two points are connected in the map without physically having to draw a line in between them, non graphical connectivity. Imagine the performance improvements that it provides. You know, you no longer have to trace the entire network to know how many meters are off a, you know, substation or how many meters are off a circuit breaker because, you know, some of that can be stored as non graphical connectivity as well, wherein traces and performance you know, things that took uh, you know, five, six minutes. Can, can can probably be done in a few seconds. And a few other things that are branch versioning and supply players that are beautiful for uh, you know, delivering the performance for users. And the last thing that is uh, very, very interesting to see is the capability to do rules. And we believe the rules capability that is available in this platform really cuts down the customizations that customers had to do over the years and what that really means in the return of investment means the upgrades are going to be a lot more faster. The upgrades are going to be a lot more effective to do because much of the customization that has been done over the years now can be implemented in rules. And coming to the utility network layer, uh, we talked about functionality for network modeling, subnetwork management, and diagrams management asset packages, just we saw. So what we see overall is this is heading into the direction of real-time GIS, access everywhere, faster upgrade cycles, and which means that improved value for uh, you know users uh, all in all moving forward but this now let me turn back to joel for uh, you know a few other uh, thoughts thanks anil um as everybody i'm sure was able to see there's an awful lot of new things uh, in the utility network that would take well more than an hour for us to share uh, even in the limited sort of efforts that we've undertaken uh, in the Pasadena water power proof of concept, there's more than we could ever possibly share in an hour. But what we do recognize is that we've seen this change in GIS as it relates to utilities over the years from civil asset management systems to network management systems to interfaces with outage management systems, preventative maintenance systems, now distribution management systems. And as things continue to improve on the sort of value chain of how to take advantage of the spatial data and and features in the network you know we're moving as anil mentioned into this more near real-time gis the models are a lot more accurate the database is uh, spatial temporal at its very core we're making access available to everyone through desktop browsers mobile devices meeting the user where they are with what they use whatever that happens to be. And by the way, having the same look and feel, uh, simplicity of use, uh, shared symbology and cartography, et cetera, uh, making it a very powerful tool for folks uh, across an enterprise. Much higher performance, uh, many, many more visualization capabilities uh, when you extend beyond the simple uh, network uh, uh, capabilities of ArcGIS Pro uh, and start looking at things like insights uh, in ArcGIS Online. Uh, there's many, many possibilities about how you can visualize data, analyze data, get more knowledge from your data. And as Anil mentioned, the simplicity of this creates faster cycles. So what we see for many customers as they embrace this technology is overall improvement in the value that they gain from it whether it's in safety or compliance or using new smart IoT systems or drones for monitoring or collecting data. And the notion uh, Anil sort of touched on a little bit, the, the mix of virtual reality and looking at things in three dimensions and trying to have a very integrated experience of your utility network with the other physical features in your GIS. We believe, as I said at the start, that this is a journey. This is not an on-off switch where you move to the utility network. Um, whilst it would be easy to simply uh, make an upgrade and move to the utility network from where you stand today, 
uh, to take full advantage of what the capabilities are. We think that there's um, you know real planning that needs to take place and that frankly can begin to take place now. And as we mentioned, the first step is really understanding what the capabilities are and the impact of the technology and what you'd like to accomplish for the future and trying to lay that out. And that's probably a three month program. And that's really where we are with Pasadena Water and Power. Sort of going through that proof of concept and looking at gap analysis and looking at migration of applications and what systems are connected. You know, the next step that we believe is the sort of assessing the readiness. Um, you know, is the data ready? Do I need to do some work on the data? Do I have a strong business case that's supportable to move this thing forward? What sort of strategic decisions are, do I want to make? How, how detailed am I going to model the network in the underground, for example? What 3D level of detail do I want to capture? And for what facilities or features? in the system. So that six month or so uh, planning process and through that, you know, moving from proof of concept projects to true prototype projects that take into full account uh, workflows and uh, applications and um, user readiness of things. And then the modernization cycle, which really is all about making the tactical decisions about when, where, and for whom. Uh, migrating your data and having a plan for uh, augmenting the data as necessary, perhaps conflating data as a result of some of the opportunities that are available, and then the transition from the sort of planning phases into deployment phases. So we believe that this is sort of a, you know, uh, an 18-month program, uh, you know, depending on the size of your utility, the complexity of your network, and how how you want to embrace uh, implementing the utility network. It could be longer, it could also be shorter, uh, but generally speaking, um, you know, we think this is somewhere between an 18 and a 24, 30 month process to fully embrace and move to the utility network for an existing ESRI utility customer. And we think the time to start is now as the product is soon to be released and um, you look towards the future. Uh, you know, planning is what we think is most important for folks uh, to get the most value out of the platform. With that, I'd like to sort of open it up to questions. Again, um, you can go to our uh, innovation lab at avinianlab.com backslash utility dash network, ESRI dash utility dash network. You'll find a bunch of um, supporting materials there, white papers, uh, case studies, some short videos and demos. Um, on how you can really maximize uh, your journey uh, to the utility network. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Joe. And um, if there are any questions, uh, I think we probably have uh, about 10 minutes or so left. Uh, we'd be happy to take questions. Um, Joe. Great. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. We do have a few questions coming in. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and start asking uh, if you guys uh, Mike, uh, Joel, and Anil want to want to jump in if uh, it pertains to you. Feel free. Uh, so, the question first one is: um, What are you planning to do after your proof of concept is done? I think that would go to Mike probably. Yeah, sounds like a good Mike question. Well, uh, one of the things we're trying to do, we expect making some changes to our data editing practices uh, based on the proof of concept. Uh, we really like that 3D look of our data. Uh, we realize uh, through this proof of concept, it, it entails about 20% more editing time. Uh, we would also uh, uh, like to be able to do, um, uh, we see that it'll do a lot more in GIS than it does now. Um, we would also be looking to update our GIS strategic plan based on this proof of concept. But right now, I mean, we haven't gotten the, the final uh, deliverable where we actually have our hands in plane on it. That's when we're going to we'll realize more of uh, what we're going to do after this. OK, great. Um, keeping with the proof of concepts, uh, the question is, is, is the software ready to do proof of concepts? I'll take that, uh, uh, Joe. Great. Sure. Uh, 
uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, we, we at Avignon, we started uh, the journey with playing the utility network software going back almost a year, year and a half ago with uh, alphas and betas and things like that. So uh, if, if you really look at it, maybe, you know, four or five months ago, you know, you probably would not be able to do as many things with customer data, although you could do with the demo data. But now as we are going through this proof of concept, especially with using the, the September uh, pre-release uh, uh, that ESRI has put out, uh, you know, yes, we, we, you know, all the functionality that you saw today is with the customer data. And I think we are able to do some uh, very meaningful uh, value to the customers, as I would say, uh, definitely, uh, Joe. Okay, um, great. Uh, so this was a question asked really early on, and I just want to get it out, <laughs> get this question answered. Um, it says, do you use uh, the local coordinate system or Mercator in the demonstration? Uh, we did use the local coordinate system that uh, Mike has for his uh, a a you know, area. I mean, uh, we, we, we basically you know, uh, used the existing data set uh, that Mike had to pull in the uh, projection system, and that's what we used. Fantastic. All right, next question. Uh, can we have a 3D inside view of of the manhole showing the connect connectivity inside? Um, I think we did uh, show that a little bit, Joe, uh, yep. you know, uh, a little bit, I, but we know, I think you said uh, a recording possibly would be available for this one, right? But uh, if anyone is interested, you know, we'll be glad to show that again. Okay. Um, how hard will it be to convert the geometric networks to the utility network? Is this something the GIS shop can do? Or should consultants do the conversion? <laughs> uh, good, 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 good question. Uh, Gee, let, I'm going to take that one. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Joel, if you want. Uh, no, we, we, we think if you're just moving um, your network from its current state and just want to move that into the utility network uh, frame, there will be some tools available. Uh, both from Esri and from folks like Avinion that will help make that migration from one network construct to another pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, having said that, um, you know, we firmly believe that uh, taking a look at what you really want to accomplish in the move and how that might change the data and how you migrate it and or supplement it uh, is a meaningful exercise that should be undertaken by someone uh, before you simply just move, you know, like to like uh, in a new paradigm. Um, and, you know, there are lots of consulting folks that are uh, prepared to do that. Uh, Vineon, clearly, uh, we have programs to help in that migration, uh, as well as tools to help in that migration, uh, as well as the capabilities to augment the data if that's required or, or, or desired. Um, and there will also be instances, I believe, where um, robust GIS shops with um, strong sort of uh, folks working inside that organization will be able to do the similar activities, uh, leveraging the available tools from Esri and others without uh, necessarily engaging a consultant, though selfishly, we always think it's better if you use one of us. Excellent. Great. Um, there was a there were several questions pertaining to that one, so I think I think you had answered it. Um, uh, let's go to the next question. Are there are there examples of utilities that have already fully transitioned to the to Esri software? I'm, I'm guessing they meant the utility network on that. Yeah, I think they they uh, they, they would have to mean utility network, and and at this point the software has not been fully released, so. Uh, there's not anyone that's fully in a production mode using the software that I'm aware of. Um, the utility and pipeline data model might be a horse of a different color, uh, which is one component of this overall transformation. Uh, I think there are some folks who have fully embraced the UPDM and have been able to put that into production, uh, especially on the gas side of things, uh, more so than the electric side. Uh, but we anticipate that um, over the course of 2018, following the formal release, you'll start seeing more customers who have fully embraced um, uh, the new platform and the new network construct and uh, will be moving towards implementing it in a production environment. 
Got it. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Uh, can you talk about the process for starting the journey? Uh, did Pasadena Water and Power have a clear idea of the way the utility network could help them, or did this uh, become known during the planning slash discovery phase? Well, for Pasadena's view, uh, that's exactly why we did this. We you know, wanted a better education on it. Uh, we were seeing it at the conferences, uh, presentations, and there was uh, I was still a little vague, at least to me there. Uh, we are kind of resource, uh, de you know, deprived here. We, we have very little resources. So, plus I wanted to see, you know, how our data, you know, was, was ready. Was it ready or what do we need to do? Um, so, but the big thing was it was more of a educational uh, to give me gap analysis uh, for our data, our data model, functionality gaps. Uh, that's what we were looking for on this. Excellent. Okay. Um, is the utility network extension available for wastewater network? Uh, Joe, I think uh, I would uh, save that as a follow-up question for the product team. Yeah, I uh, let's 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 ask the product team on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does the utility network provide for equipment connectivity and actual load connectivity? The answer is yes, absolutely. I mean, one of the uh, uh, interesting things to know is that now that GIS can actually, uh, you know, provides the ability to model terminals, uh, containers, and all the intricate details uh, that are typically not put in the GIS before. Uh, now it's for the customers to choose, you know, how much of the equipment infrastructure details that is typically there in the field that you really don't put in the GIS and see what percentage of it do you have to start posting and in, including into the GIS in doing so absolutely okay um, how much data was converted in uh, proof of concept and how much time was spent cleaning the data to load into the utility network um, I would have to say on this one that we truly thank Mike for truly partnering with us on this in the sense that uh, we at Evignan had several iterations of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, conversion done before, although with, uh, you know, uh, in sample data, it is altogether a different experience actually working with real data, real 17 KV and 4 KV circuits and understand the, you know, the way the facing is changing, understand how the voltages are changing, where the upstream downstream things are and what are the missing pieces that are there that are to be supplemented in the utility network and things like that. So in terms of the quantity of the data that was, uh, you know, that is getting converted or is converted right now is uh, two circuits, 170 KV circuit and 14 KV circuit. As uh, Mike mentioned, it's a step down scenario there uh, with the transformer and big transformer in between. Uh, I would say for uh, cleaning perspective, uh, I don't think we are quite done at this point in terms of cleaning in the sense that, uh, you know, we are still looking at examining the choices, right? You have offset things done, offset of lines for 2D cartography before. Uh, you know, right now, you may or may not have to do the same kind of offsets depending on how much you want to go to 3D. So I think it's an iterative process. We have gone through uh, three iterations so far. And each iteration for us is probably, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a life cycle perspective, we call it as a couple of weeks sprints. So we have gone through three cycles of that. And in doing so, we are coming back and, you know, showing this data to Mike and trying to help him examine each one of those decisions. So it's definitely not a flip of a switch. So there is some learning involved, some decisions that need to be made uh, as we are trying to go through this journey. So it is definitely a multi-month effort in trying to understand uh, what type of changes are going to be beneficial uh, and to help uh, Mike with this learning process. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm not going to ask any more questions. We're, we're about out of time here. So this uh, is going to conclude our webinar. Um, please know if you did ask a question, it will be answered. There's, there's actually quite a few questions we didn't get to, so uh, we will um, answer those questions uh, after after this webinar is over and you'll you'll get an answer uh, so i'd like to thank uh mike from pasadena water power and joel and anil from avinian thank you guys for, for uh giving a, a great webinar and thank you for all the attendees um 
Uh, please answer the survey questions before you log off and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.